Thoughts become perception. Perception becomes reality. Alter your thoughts. Alter your reality. The greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. The greatest revolution of our generation is the discovery that human beings, by changing the inner attitudes of their minds, can change the outer aspects of their lives. A great many people think they are thinking when they are merely rearranging their prejudices. There is a law in psychology that if you form a picture in your mind of what you would like to be, and you keep and hold that picture there long enough, you will soon become exactly as you have been thinking. Our view of the world is truly shaped by what we decide to hear. The world we see that seems so insane is the result of a belief system that is not working. To perceive the world differently, we must be willing to change our belief system, let the past slip away, expand our sense of now, and dissolve the fear in our minds. The deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. Common sense and a sense of humor are the same thing, moving at different speeds. A sense of humor is just common sense, dancing. All of our life is but a mass of small habits, practical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual, that bear us irresistibly toward our destiny. A winner's attitude, it may be difficult, but it's possible. A loser's attitude, it may be possible, but it's too difficult. The art of being wise is the art of knowing what to overlook. Believe that life is worth living and your belief will help create the fact. Your hopes, dreams, and aspirations are legitimate. They are trying to take you airborne, above the clouds, above the storms, if you only let them. Formula to live your dream, 1. Be bold. 2. Begin now, 3. No exceptions. Man lives in only one small room of the enormous house of his consciousness. There is nothing so absurd that it cannot be believed as truth if repeated often enough. There is nothing so absurd that it cannot be believed as truth if repeated often enough. You may not get everything you dream about, but you will never get anything you don't dream about. Of all the beautiful truths pertaining to the soul none is more gladdening or fruitful than to know you can regenerate and make yourself what you will. Do something every day for no other reason than you would rather not do it, so that when the hour of dire need draws nigh, it may find you not unnerved and untrained to stand the test. The great thing, then, in all education, is to make our nervous system our ally instead of our enemy. Act as if what you do makes a difference. It does. Positive images of the future are a powerful and magnetic force. They draw us on and energize us, give us courage and will to take on important initiatives. Negative images of the future also have a magnetism. They pull the spirit downward in the path of despair. The greatest weapon we have to combat stress is the ability to choose our thoughts. The mind is made up by what it feeds upon. The great use of life is to spend it for something that will outlast it. Whenever two people meet, there are really six people present. There is each man as he sees himself, each man as the other person sees him, and each man as he really is. Seek out that particular mental attribute which makes you feel most deeply and vitally alive. There are two lives, the natural and the spiritual, and we must lose the one before we can participate in the other. Acceptance of what has happened is the first step to overcoming the consequences of any misfortune. Give up the feeling of responsibility, let go your hold, resign the care of your destiny to higher powers, be genuinely indifferent as to what becomes of it all and you will find not only that you gain a perfect inward relief, but often also, in addition, the particular goods you sincerely thought you were renouncing. To kill time is not murder, it's suicide. The desire to gain wealth and the fear to lose it are our chief breeders of cowardice and propagators of corruption. If you believe that feeling bad or worrying long enough will change a past or future event, then you are residing on another planet with a different reality system. The power to move the world is in the subconscious mind belief creates the actual fact. There is but one cause of human failure. And that is man's lack of faith in his true self. Habit simplifies our movements, makes them accurate, and diminishes fatigue. The sovereign cure for worry is prayer. Tension is a habit. Relaxing is a habit. Bad habits can be broken, good habits formed. What holds attention determines action. 
The greatest discovery of the 20th century is that our attitude of mind determines our quality of life, not circumstances. When you have to make a choice and don't make it, that is in itself a choice. You can alter your life by altering the state of your mind. I don't sing because I'm happy, I'm happy because I sing. Let everything you do be done as if it makes a difference. The essence of genius is to know what to overlook. Real servants don't try to use God for their purposes. They let God use them for his purposes. Real servants don't try to use God for their purposes. They let God use them for his purposes. We forget that every good that is worth possessing must be paid for in strokes of daily effort. We postpone and postpone until those smiling possibilities are dead. By neglecting the necessary concrete labor, by sparing ourselves the little daily tax, we are positively digging the graves of our higher possibilities. Touch is the alpha and omega of affection. A man of sense is never discouraged by difficulties. He redoubles his industry and his diligence. He perseveres and infallibly prevails at last. A man of sense is never discouraged by difficulties. He redoubles his industry and his diligence. He perseveres and infallibly prevails at last. In order to disprove the assertion that all crows are black, one white crow is sufficient. Everybody should do at least two things each day that he hates to do, just for practice. Success or failure depends more upon attitude than upon capacity. Successful men act as though they have accomplished or are enjoying something. Soon it becomes a reality. Act, look, feel successful, conduct yourself accordingly, and you will be amazed at the positive results. You can be an artist without visual images, a reader without eyes, a mass of erudition with a bad elementary memory. In almost any subject, your passion for the subject will save you. If you only care enough for a result, you will almost certainly attain it. If you wish to be rich, you will be rich. If you wish to be learned, you will be learned. If you wish to be good, you will be good. Only you must, then, really wish these things, and wish them with exclusiveness, and not wish at the same time a hundred other incompatible things just as strongly. It is your friends who make your world. In the practical use of our intellect, forgetting is as important as remembering. Most people live, whether physically, intellectually, or morally, in a very restricted circle of their potential being. If you want a confidence, act as if you already have it. Try the as if technique. Action seems to follow feeling, but really actions and feelings go together, and by regulating the action, which is under the more direct control of the will, we can indirectly regulate the feeling, which is not. Thus the sovereign voluntary path to cheerfulness, if our cheerfulness be lost, is to sit up cheerfully and to act and speak as if cheerfulness were already there. It is our attitude at the beginning of a difficult task which, more than anything else, will affect its successful outcome. Man can change his life simply by changing his attitude. Just for today, I will exercise my soul in three ways. I will do somebody a good turn and not get found out. I will do at least two things I don't want to do lives based on having are less free than lives based either on doing or being. We don't laugh because we're happy we're happy because we laugh. Beyond the very extreme of fatigue and distress, we may find amounts of ease and power we never dreamed ourselves to own. Sources of strength never taxed at all because we never push through the obstruction the transition from tenseness, self-responsibility, and worry, to equanimity, receptivity, and peace is the most wonderful of all those shiftings of inner equilibrium, those changes of personal center of energy, which I have analyzed so often, and the chief wonder of it is that it so often comes about, not by doing, but by simply relaxing and throwing the burden down. A new idea is first condemned as ridiculous and then dismissed as trivial until finally it becomes what everybody knows. The aim of science is always to reduce complexity to simplicity. We forget that every good that is worth possessing must be paid for in strokes of daily effort. We have grown literally afraid to be poor. We despise anyone who elects to be poor in order to simplify and save his inner life. If he does not join the general scramble and pant with the money-making street, we deem him spiritless and lacking in ambition with no attempt there can be no failure. With no failure, no humiliation. No matter how full a reservoir of maxims one may possess, and no matter how good one's sentiments may be, 
if one has not taken advantage of every concrete opportunity to act, one's character may remain entirely unaffected for the better. Modern man has not ceased to be credulous. The need to believe haunts him. Act the part and you will become the part. Do every day or two something for no other reason than its difficulty. The function of ignoring, of inattention, is as vital a factor in mental progress as the function of attention itself. A man may not achieve everything he has dreamed, but he will never achieve anything great without having dreamed it first. The greatest discovery of my generation is that a human being can alter his life by altering his attitudes. Most people live, whether physically, intellectually, or morally, in a very restricted circle of their potential being. They make very small use of their possible consciousness and of their soul's resources in general, much like a man who, out of his whole bodily organism, should get into a habit of using and moving only his little finger. The attitude of unhappiness is not only painful, it is mean and ugly. What can be more base and unworthy than the pining, puling, mumping mood, no matter by what outward ills it may have been engendered? What is more injurious to others? What less helpful as a way out of the difficulty? It but fastens and perpetuates the trouble which occasioned it, and increases the total evil of the situation. At all costs, then, we ought to reduce the sway of that mood, we ought to scout it in ourselves and others, and never show it tolerance. Seek out that particular mental attribute which makes you feel most deeply and vitally alive, along with which comes the inner voice which says, this is the real me, and when you have found that attitude, follow it. A genius is the man in whom you are least likely to find the power of attending to anything insipid or distasteful in itself. He breaks his engagements, leaves his letters unanswered, neglects his family duties incorrigibly because he is powerless to turn his attention down and back from those more interesting trains of imagery with which his genius constantly occupies his mind. Could the young but realize how soon they will become mere walking bundles of habits, they would give more heed to their conduct while in the plastic state. If you give appreciation to people, you win their goodwill. But more important than that, Practicing this philosophy has made a different person of me. I myself believe that the evidence for God lies primarily in interpersonal experiences. In any project, the important factor is your belief. Without belief, there can be no successful outcome. Nothing is so fatiguing as the eternal hanging on of an uncompleted task. The discovery of the power of our thoughts will prove to be the most important discovery of our time. There's nothing so absurd that if you repeat it often enough, people will believe it. Strength is a facade for the proud. Weakness is a mask for the lazy. There are no differences, but differences of degree between different degrees of difference and no difference. Is life worth living? It all depends on the liver. The faculty of voluntarily bringing back a wandering attention, over and over again, is the very root of judgment, character, and will. An education which should improve this faculty would be the education par excellence. We with our lives are like islands in the sea. The islands also hang together through the ocean's bottom. Compared to what we ought to be, we are half awake. The mind, in short, works on the data it receives very much as the sculptor works on his block of stone. Life is one long struggle between conclusions based on abstract ways of conceiving cases and opposite conclusions prompted by our instinctive perception of them. There is a voice inside which speaks and says, this is the real me. To improve the golden moment of opportunity and catch the good that is within our reach is the great art of life. Whenever you are in conflict with someone, there is one factor that can make the difference between damaging your relationship and deepening it. That factor is attitude. There is no worse lie than a truth misunderstood be you those who hear it. He who refuses to embrace a unique opportunity loses the prize as surely as if he had failed. We have to live today by what truth we can get today and be ready tomorrow to call it falsehood. The education of attention would be an education par excellence truth is something that happens to an idea. Keep the faculty of effort alive in you by a little gratuitous exercise every day. Instinct leads, logic does, but follow. If you only care enough for a result, you will almost certainly attain it. Only you must, 
then really wish these things and wish them exclusively and not wish at the same time a hundred other incompatible things just as strongly as a rule we disbelieve all the facts and theories for which we have no use our beliefs are really rules for action any object not interesting in itself may become interesting through becoming associated with an object in which an interest already exists the two associated objects grow as it were together the interesting portion sheds its quality over the whole and thus things not interesting in their own right borrow an interest which becomes as real and as strong as that of any natively interesting thing since you make evil or good by your own thoughts it is your ruling of your thoughts which proves to be your principal concern the further limits of our being plunge, it seems to me, into an altogether other dimension of existence from the sensible and merely understandable world. Name it the mystical region, or the supernatural region, whichever you choose. So far as our ideal impulses originate in this region, we belong to it in a more intimate sense than that in which we belong to the visible world, for we belong in the most intimate sense wherever our ideals belong. Emotional occasions, especially violent ones, are extremely potent in precipitating mental rearrangements. The sudden and explosive ways in which love, jealousy, guilt, fear, remorse, or anger can seize upon one are known to everybody. And emotions that come in this explosive way seldom leave things as they found them. One of the greatest discoveries of our time is that a man can alter the state of their life by altering the state of their mind. We must make automatic and habitual, as early as possible, as many useful actions as we can. The more of the details of our daily life we can hand over to the effortless custody of automatism, the more our higher powers of mind will be set free for their own proper work. Our life is always deeper than we know, is always more divine than it seems, and hence we are able to survive degradations and despairs which otherwise must engulf us. Metaphysics means nothing but an unusually obstinate effort to think clearly. Habit is thus the enormous flywheel of society, its most precious conservative agent. It alone is what keeps us all within the bounds of ordinance. My first act of free will shall be to believe in free will. The ideas gained by men before they are 25 are practically the only ideas they shall have in their lives. The attitude of unhappiness is not only painful, it is mean and ugly. Every time a resolve or a fine glow of feeling evaporates without bearing practical fruit is worse than a chance lost. It works to hinder future resolutions and emotions from taking the normal path of discharge. There is no more contemptible type of human character than that of the nerveless sentimentalist and dreamer who spends his life in a weltering sea of sensibility and emotion, but who never does a manly concrete deed. We and God have business with each other, and in opening ourselves to God's influence our deepest destiny is fulfilled. Philosophy lives in words, but truth and fact well up into our lives in ways that exceed verbal formulation. There is in the living act of perception always something that glimmers and twinkles and will not be caught, and for which reflection comes too late. The one who thinks over his experiences most, and weaves them into systematic relations with each other, will be the one with the best memory. We are all ready to be savage in some cause. The difference between a good man and a bad one is the choice of the cause. Fear of life in one form or another is the great thing to exorcise. The hell to be endured hereafter, of which theology tells, is no worse than the hell we make for ourselves in this world by habitually fashioned our characters in the wrong way. Feed the growing human being, feed him with the sort of experience for which from year to year he shows a natural craving, and he will develop in adult life a sounder sort of mental tissue, even though he may seem to be wasting a great deal of his growing time in the eyes of those for whom the only channels of learning are books and verbally communicated information. When a thing is new, people say, it is not true. Later, when its truth becomes obvious, they say, it is not important. Finally, when its importance cannot be denied, they say, anyway, it is not new. Faith means belief in something concerning which doubt is theoretically possible. The instinct of ownership is fundamental in man's nature. We never fully grasp the import of any true statement until we have a clear notion of what the opposite untrue statement would be. Genius is the capacity for seeing relationships where lesser men see none. The great use of life is to spend it for something that will outlast it. 
This life is worth living, we can say, since it is what we make it. Believe that life is worth living and your belief will help create the fact. Men habitually use only a small part of the power which they actually possess. All religions begin with the cry help. The exercise of prayer, and those who habitually exert it, must be regarded by us doctors as the most adequate and normal of all the pacifiers of the mind and commerce of the nerves. A new position of responsibility will usually show a man to be a far stronger creature than was supposed. The world is all the richer for having a devil in it, so long as we keep our foot upon his neck. Every sort of energy and endurance, of courage and capacity for handling life's evils, is set free in those who have religious faith. The total possible consciousness may be split into parts which coexist but mutually ignore each other. Begin to be now what you will be hereafter. As the art of reading is the art of skipping, so the art of being wise is the art of knowing what to overlook. An idea, to be suggestive, must come to the individual with the force of revelation. It is as important to cultivate your silence power as your word power. Whilst part of what we perceive comes through our senses from the object before us, another part always comes out of our own mind. An educated memory depends on an organized system of associations, and its goodness depends on two of their peculiarities, first, on the persistency of the associations, and, second, on their number. Belief is desecrated when given to unproved and unquestioned statements for the solace and private pleasure of the believer. It is wrong always, everywhere, and for everyone, to believe anything upon insufficient evidence. This overcoming of all the usual barriers between the individual and the absolute is the great mystic achievement. In mystic states we both become one with the absolute and we become aware of our oneness. This is the everlasting and triumphant mystical tradition, hardly altered by differences of clime or creed. If you give appreciation to people, you win their goodwill. To change one's life, start immediately. Do it flamboyantly. A paradise of inward tranquility seems to be faith's usual result. Truth for us is simply a collective name for verification processes we want all our friends to tell us our bad qualities, it is only the particular ass that does so whom we can't tolerate. Everyone knows that on any given day there are energies slumbering in him which the incitements of that day do not call forth. Compared with what we ought to be, we are only half awake. The human individual usually lives far within his limits. We divert our attention from disease and death as much as we can. The slaughterhouses are huddled out of sight and never mentioned, so that the world we recognize officially in literature and in society is a poetic fiction far handsomer, cleaner, and better than the world that really is. Compared with what we ought to be, we are only half awake. Our fires are damped, our drafts are checked. We are making use of only a small part of our possible mental and physical resources. It is only by risking our persons from one hour to another that we live at all. Procrastination is attitude's natural assassin. There is nothing so fatiguing as an uncompleted task science as such assuredly has no authority, for she can only say what is, not what is not. We must make automatic and habitual, as early as possible, as many useful actions as we the acquisition of a new habit, we must take car to launch ourselves with as strong and decided initiative as possible. Never suffer an exception to occur till the new habit is securely rooted in your life. Happiness comes of the capacity to feel deeply, to enjoy simply, to think freely, to risk life, to be needed. Which give happiness? Thomas Jefferson, we never enjoy perfect happiness. Our most fortunate successes are mingled with sadness. Some anxieties always perplex the reality of our satisfaction. Men's activities are occupied into ways, in grappling with external circumstances and in striving to set things at one in their own topsy-turvy mind. For the moment, what we attend to is reality. We with our lives are like islands in the sea, or like trees in the forest. But the trees also commingle their roots in the darkness underground. Philosophy is an unusually stubborn attempt to think clearly. But facts are facts, and if we only get enough of them they are sure to combine. So our self-feeling in this world depends entirely on what we back ourselves to be and do. Seize the very first possible opportunity to act on every resolution you make, and on every emotional prompting you may experience in the direction of the habits you aspire to gain. 
Success plus self-esteem equals pretensions. If merely feeling good could decide, drunkenness would be the supremely valid human experience. We are spinning our own fates, good or evil, and never to be undone. Every smallest stroke of virtue or vice leaves its never so little scar. Nothing we ever do is, in strict scientific literalness, wiped out. We may be in the universe as dogs and cats are in our libraries, seeing the books and hearing the conversation, but having no inkling of the meaning of it all. Don't preach too much to your pupils or abound in good talk in the abstract. Lie and wait rather for the practical opportunities, be prompt to seize those as they pass, and thus at one operation get your pupils both to think, to feel, and to do. Let no youth have any anxiety about the upshot of his education, whatever the line of it may be. If he keep faithfully busy each hour of the working day, he may safely leave the result to itself. He can with perfect certainty count on waking up some fine morning to find himself one of the competent ones of his generation. Our errors are surely not such awfully solemn things. In a world where we are so certain to incur them in spite of all our caution, a certain lightness of heart seems healthier than this excessive nervousness on their behalf. This life is worth living, we can say, since it is what we make it. Every individual existence goes out in a lonely spasm of helpless agony. First, a new theory is attacked as absurd, then it is admitted to be true, but obvious and insignificant. Finally, it is seen to be so important that its adversaries claim that they themselves discovered it. Spiritual energy flows in and produces effects, psychological or material, within the phenomenal world. There is no more miserable human being than one in whom nothing is habitual but indecision, and for whom the lighting of every cigar, the drinking of every cup, the time of rising and going to bed every day, and the beginning of every bit of work are subjects of express volitional deliberation. Each of us literally chooses, by his way of attending to things, what sort of universe he shall appear to himself to inhabit. A man has as many social selves as there are individuals who recognize him. Knowledge about life is one thing, effective occupation of a place in life, with its dynamic currents passing through your being, is another. If the grace of God miraculously operates, it probably operates through the subliminal door. How to gain, how to keep, how to recover happiness is in fact for most men at all times the secret motive of all they do, and of all they are willing to endure. History is a bath of blood. Man alone of all the creatures of earth can change his own pattern. Man alone is the architect of his own destiny. Effort is the one strictly undervalued and original contribution we make to this world. The true is the name of whatever proves itself to be good in the way of belief, and good, too, for definite, assignable reasons. Religious awe is the same organic thrill which we feel in a forest at twilight or in a mountain gorge.